All right, I want to take a few minutes here to kind of draw the differences between the Catholic Trinity and the Biblical Godhead. Let me show you here. Because this is, you know, this is a controversial thing and there's all kinds of arguing back and forth and whatever else. But I think it's important to define uh, what we're talking about here. And uh, this is stuff that needs to be ironed out in the body of Christ, in the Bible-believing movement in particular. And King James Bible believers have to be always vigilant for Roman Catholic infiltration. And if you see things coming into the body of Christ that you say, wait a second, I don't see this in my King James Bible, but I see it in the catechism. Bible believers shouldn't be afraid of a catechism. All right. You can read through this thing and see how just error filled it is. All right. The reason we've been given the word of God that we can hold in our hands in this wonderful English Bible right here, our King James Bibles, is so that we can disprove the errors of Rome and the heresies of Rome. And that's why the Roman Catholic Church for centuries did not want the Bible being translated into the common vulgar, what it was called, you know, the old time word for common tongue. The Vatican fears you holding the Bible because they want to trump God's scripture, God's word with their traditions, their traditions of men. So we shouldn't fear talking about these things. But what we should fear is when we start to see professing King James Bible believers using things that are in the catechism and nowhere in the King James Bible and militantly defending those Catholic teachings. That's what we should think about. And of course, the little, the little Vatigoon thing that they'll do is they'll say, well, you know, I saw Robert Breaker in his comment back to, you know, my video. He said, um, well, you know, rapture, you know, he'll use the word rapture and rapture is technically in, you know, the Latin Vulgate of Jerome. So technically it's a Catholic term and whatever else. Well, actually, if you ever watch my videos where I talk about the pre-trib rapture, I say now the actual term is the time, the uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away, the pre tajka if you want to make it into that, you know, okay. And again, it's not, you know, if I say Jesus and a Catholic says Jesus, well, it's not the same thing as saying Trinity, Catholic word versus Godhead. And I find it very ironic too that those people that claim to be Bible-believing Christians, they'll say that God is the three and, and everything else and all this stuff. God is three separate persons and we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They will stick by this term Trinity. They refuse to use the word Godhead. It's kind of weird. They'll say it in the conversation, whatever else, but they'll go right back to, we got to defend the Trinity. I will not defend, I will not back down on the Trinity and this, this, whatever other teaching. They won't use Godhead. Now, if we can agree to one thing as King James Bible believing Christians, I think that we should all agree that our speech should always be corrected by our King James Bibles. And if we're saying things that don't appear in the King James Bible, then we need to correct our speech to line up with this book, no matter what it is. And I'm open to correction. If I'm saying things or doing things or whatever else that's wrong, um, correct me. I'll tell you one here recently. Uh, a little while ago, my wife said to me, she said, why do you always say it's just like, it's like, it's like, it's like, she said, is that really something that you get from the Bible? Or is that kind of a modern thing and whatever? So I've been trying to say, stop saying it's like this, or it's like, I say it's as if, or it's whatever. We try to stick with the King James Bible, all right? And of course, you know, there are some things that we're going to say in our modern day usage and, and whatever. I mean, the word Bible is not a, in the Bible. I understand that. But it's not replacing something else, you see. The Catholic word Trinity is replacing the word Godhead. And I certainly have said Trinity in the past, too. You can see some of my older sermons and whatever else. I said Trinity in the past, very ignorantly. We repeat things. And I'm going to show you some of that stuff later on. And I'm going to be doing a bunch of different videos on this whole issue. But let me just show you some things here. Now, I'm going to attempt to draw the difference between the three, all right? So I'm going to draw a very rough outline of... These are not blob monsters or something. I'm just trying to draw a rough outline of three bodies here. Very rough. <laughs> 
by no means is this uh, something that's all going to be real high-end art here or anything. I'm just trying to draw fast. All right. So you have three different bodies there. All right. Hopefully you can see that. These three different bodies here. Got to draw things fairly small. All right. Over here, we have one body. Okay. Three separate persons here, one person there. All right. Let's get that straight. First of all, three persons. Persons is plural. All right. Here we have one person. Am I right so far? Yes. Here we have the Trinity. Here we have the Godhead. Now, let me show you. The Godhead consists of the black line there would be like the body. Then on the inside of that, we have the soul. Now this is an exact, again, an exact drawing of the whole thing, but you know, the Bible talks about, you know, the circumcision, the spiritual circumcision made without hands. All right. So you have a soul inside of that body. Again, I hope that you can see that this is probably pretty small on that camera there. Maybe I'll have to zoom in later, but, um, the Godhead then has a body, the black, and then the red would be the soul. And then on the inside of that, I'll just kind of roughly do this here. You have the green here, and we'll just make that into the spirit. Okay, so in between the two here, I'll write this. Body, soul, and spirit. Now, is there any argument there? Body, soul, spirit. A person consists of these three things. Anybody that's ever lived has a body, they have a soul, they have a spirit. Right there. Those of us that believe in the biblical teaching of the Godhead believe that Jesus Christ there is the express image of the Father, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Body, soul, spirit. Three in one. You understand? One person. There are four references to person in your King James Bible in relation to the Godhead, right? In relation to God. Not one time is there ever a persons, God's, you know, persons, in the persons of God or anything else. Four references to person. Um, one in the Old Testament, the book of Job. Then you have uh, in the book of Matthew, I believe it is, where you know, Pilate says about Jesus, he says, I have nothing to do with this just person, you know, and then you have the, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, about the, the person of Christ, and then Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, Jesus Christ is the image of the Father, he's the, you know, person there, the express image of the Father. Now, of course, over here, if you're going to teach this thing, you also have to have a body, soul, and spirit. I'll draw this a little bit differently to save time. Like that. Give this guy here a soul. He needs one. He looks kind of rough. I was going to draw stick men, but I thought I'd go a little bit more high tech than that. So... 
But it, there they got, each got a soul, and then I'll just draw a green line in the middle there. All right. Instead of coloring it all in green, I'll do a little bit, I guess. And then it goes over here like that. A little bit over there, we'll say. Just to be fair. And finally, this guy here, he needs a spirit too. Alright, down into there, down into there. So, on this side, we have the Godhead. One person with a body, soul, and spirit. Three in one. Over here, with the Trinity, we have God in three persons. One, two, three. Am I correct? God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Oh, no scripture for the Trinity there. Well, it's in a hymn, so it must be perfect and holy and wonderful. Uh, I don't think so. But we have three. And each one is consisting of three. Now, how does that work? So we have one person, three parts over here. You see? Three in one, and these three are one. Three persons, nine parts. Right? They each have their own body, soul, and spirit. And I'd like to ask you the question, which I think is very fun to consider. What is the spirit of the Holy Spirit? kind of odd but this one over here how do you describe how do you how do you draw this one here okay how can you well somebody can kind of artist rendition of Jesus what they think Jesus might have looked like and they're usually painting or drawing or uh, you know Catholic drawings but uh, you know after the Catholic artists that have you know tried to draw this Jesus guy um, but how about this one over here you say, well, let me just let me try to describe the Trinity for you. Um, we'll go like this here. We'll, I'll draw it down here. So you have three separate and yet equal beings, and they're all together. So we'll just draw this like this. See? It's like three intertwining circles. Now, how many times have you seen somebody try to draw the Trinity, and that's exactly what they draw, and they're drawing a witchcraft symbol? But is this an accurate description of how this thing works? Or how about this one? How about the uh, triangle of Catholicism? And you have God in the center. Up here you have Father... Uh, spirit, Son. And then here, if you write like this, you say, is not, is not, is not. So you see, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father. But they're all God. Okay. Um, question for you, if you believe in this Catholic Trinity thing. Uh, they'll come out and they'll vehemently, they'll say, God is not the Father. God is not the, or, or excuse me, they'll say, Jesus is not the Father. There you go. Excuse me, erase the other one there. They'll say, Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is not the Father. He's not God the Father. You say, okay, um, is Jesus another God? Well, he's God the Son. Um, so let me get this straight then. There's two gods that you have there? Oh, no, they're one God. Um, 
What? Jesus is not God the Father, but he's not a separate God. Excuse me? There's three persons, but they're one person. You see, this is pagan philosophy over here. Let me show you a couple of pictures of actual Catholic Trinity idols. All right? Look at these. You see, you go to a Catholic cathedral someplace, and they have these all over the world, and you can buy the little idols and little statues and things. I'll show you pictures of those too. But you go around, and you will see these Trinity idols, and that's what they are. Uh, there's no basis in Scripture for this whole thing. And you'll see this thing of this dove that levitates above the Father and the Son there. And yet the Bible never says that the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove. It says he descended from heaven like as a dove. It does not say he came in the form of a dove. Doesn't say that anywhere in the King James Bible. Again, another pagan tradition. The Holy Spirit is a dove. He's a dove. No, he descended like as a dove. Okay, I could say that guy runs like the lightning or runs like the wind. That doesn't mean he's the wind or lightning. You see how that thing works? Jesus Christ, you know, is there. He's being baptized and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove, comes down. All right, you say, how did that work? I don't know. I wasn't there. Were you? <laughs> I don't think so. But you see, there's another interesting thing about this. You see, right here, they are made up of three parts each. Body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit. And, but they all share one thing in common. They're all God. Right? Am I right? So then they're two-thirds different and one-third similar, we'll say. It's rather interesting. A brother brought this up to me, and I think it's a really good point. So, they are two-thirds similar, okay? Because they have, or excuse me, two-thirds different, two-thirds different. One-third of them is the same. They can all claim the title of God, but then the other two-thirds of, of them are, you know, different. Interesting because if you take two-thirds and you convert it from a, a fraction like this to a decimal, do you know what it turns into? Point six, 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 and it can go on then to seven, six, 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 to seven. Do you think maybe there's something to this? I mean, down here, I showed in my other study, there's another trinity in Catholicism, and this thing is shown as an upside down triangle. And up here you have Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, the Holy Family. Holy Trinity, Holy Family. And what do you get when you put the two together? You get a nice six-pointed Antichrist star, a hexagram. Six, six, six. Two-thirds similar, or excuse me, one-third similar, two-thirds different. Six, six, six. Three circles, they're all, you know, they're separate and yet they're co-equal. They're, they're coming together. 666. Six, six. And in the book of Revelation, you have three beings ruling. Beast, false prophet, and Satan. You know, that's why I have such a big issue about this pagan concept right here. There's something very, very deep and very satanic and very sinister here. And when I read in the Catechism and I read and it says, the Trinity Doctrine, one more time, just in case you haven't heard this, paragraph 2, the Father, page 69, number 232 in the Roman Catholic Catechism says, the faith of all Christians rests on the Trinity. Number 234, the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in Himself. It is therefore the source of all the other mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. 
It's the most important thing to a Roman Catholic. The most important thing. I wonder why. I wonder why. Could it be that they're worshiping another god? That's the real issue here. They're not worshiping Jesus Christ. They ignore all the scriptures where the Bible plainly says that, you know, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And you just go on and on and on. And they just say, no, 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 no. And they'll throw their verses at you and things, and they'll come out and they'll say, well, he's seated on the right hand of the Father in heaven and things. Oh, yeah, well, the body, soul, and spirit can split up, you know. I mean, our soul leaves our bodies at death. It's just incredible. They don't get it because they're lost. That's the whole thing. But if you've been here and you say, well, I kind of lean this way, but I can still use the term Trinity. I've done that. No, you can't. Why? Because it's not in the King James Bible, right? It's a, and you say, well, yeah, but, but there's, there's things that, that aren't in the King James Bible that we can use. Do you think the word Godhead is a fairly important thing? I mean, I don't believe it's the central, most important, you know, doctrine of the entire faith of Christianity, real Christianity, not Catholicism. I don't think it's the most important thing, because uh, obviously, Psalm 138, verse 2, read that for you here real quick. If you have a King James Bible, turn to it, because this is something that you need to get. Psalm 138, verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. What's most important, this authority of Scripture or this? The book. All right? But here's the whole point. Godhead shows up three times. All right? Let me write that for you. Three times in one Bible. Trinity, zero. So why would a Bible-believing Christian stubbornly refuse, even if you don't want to believe this over here, why would you stubbornly refuse to use the word Godhead and replace this pagan concept over here, Trinity, and say, I'm not, okay, yeah, you're, you're right, you're all right. Yeah, we, as Christians, we need to be saying what the Bible says. I mean, you know, you want to agree to disagree with me and whatever else, well, you got some major issues, but the whole point is, at least agree to disagree, so to speak. Let's agree and say, let's get this, let's get, get this word out of our speech as Bible-believing Christians. I mean, again, all these Catholics being molested and everything else. Do we really want to look as much like Catholics as we can as Bible-believing Christians? Or, we don't, or do we want to be separate from that whole thing? Going around and we, we, we'll hand out gospel tracts with winged angels in them. And then after the person gets saved, then we'll bring them in and say, actually, there are no winged angels in the Bible. Excuse me? Oh, well, and uh, I should also add that there are no church buildings. But that's okay because we can take it from the Catholic Church and we can do it and Christianize it and whatever else. Oh, and uh, there is no Trinity. The word is Godhead, but we're going to stick with the Trinity and we're going to stick with all these Catholic words and terminology. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. Um, no. The Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Son. Countless scriptures that say they are. You see, there was a man in the Bible that God hated. That man's name was Esau. Written about in the Old Testament and in the New Testament in the Pauline epistles. God hated Esau for a number of reasons, but one of the big ones was Esau despised his birthright. You know what, Christian? Do you have a King James Bible in your hands? That's your birthright. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Do you despise your birthright? Do you realize the cost that our Christian ancestors had to pay so that we could have this book in our hands? You want to make my blood boil? 
start talking to me about the uh, martyrs and the Reformation years and all the, the Spanish Inquisition and all this other stuff. I just posted over our Patreon page, I posted a, a video Bob Jones University brought out about the, it's called A Flame in the Wind. It's about the Spanish Inquisition. If you haven't seen it, watch it. And uh, if you're saved, it'll get your blood boiling. And you'll think back to what the Catholic Church did. The Roman Catholic Church, not the medieval church with the... the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, the same church that still has an office of Inquisition. That same one. The same one that still has a lot of Roman Catholics in it that hate Bible-believing Christians. And they came out with this nice little smoke screen right here, the Second Vatican Council, and they say, oh, well, we'll, we'll make translations with separated churches and, and we'll kind of get along with things. Yeah, you know why? Because they're using this to regain power. And you read the King James Bible and you look at the book of Revelation, it's the Catholic Church that's back in power. It's not going to happen on my watch as far as me giving in and just kind of going along and just kind of, I don't want to speak against Catholicism. I will speak against Catholicism. I can't keep it out of the Babel buildings, nor would I want to. That's their system anyhow. Let them have it. Whatever. I can't keep it out of the Methodists or the Lutherans or the blah, blah, blah. But I will fight it when I see it in the King James Bible-believing movement. I don't head this movement. I'm just another preacher in this movement. I teach and preach the Word of God from the King James Bible without apology, without correcting it from the Greek or the Hebrew. And when I see fakers like Robert Breaker and Ed Fenninger and a bunch of other cowards and liars and deceivers, and Greg Miller too, by the way, which I'll be coming out and exposing that liar, and they're coming out and they're saying they're insisting on the Trinity. They are a Roman Catholic infiltrator. They might not go to Mass, they might not be a Jesuit, they might, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But they're using Catholic terms to overthrow the King James Bible terms and the teachings of the King James Bible. But it's okay because, you know, oh, what's, what's the big deal? Let's not make a big deal. I'll make a big deal because I have memories of when I first got saved. You know, one of the things that affected me the most is when I found out, when I started to read Fox's Book of Martyrs, wherever it is here, I got it somewhere here. I started reading that. I never knew that Christians were tortured for the Word of God. I had no idea. I had no idea of the suffering that Christians have been, have been, you know, had to go through at the hands of the Vatican and the cruelty of the Vatican. And then I started to hear about all the priest pedophilia. And I started to see accounts of these little children, people that have grown up, and they, and they talked about how their lives have just been wrecked because of being sexually molested by a bunch of pervert priests. And I started railing on Catholicism. I'd go into these Babel buildings, these Baptist ba you know, churches, and I'd go in there and I'd say, the Catholic Church is wicked. Look at what they're doing. And it's, just tone it down. Let's take it easy on the Catholics. And I'm thinking, what, am I, what, what kind of bizarro world is this? I'm supposed to take it easy on the people that murdered my Christian ancestors? Tortured them to death? I'm supposed to take it easy on that? Don't mention them by name, just kind of... Uh. And then I started to find out about the Nestle's text and the fact that the Vatican controls this. And I started looking at all these other things. And the Lord shows us proof after proof after proof of Jesuit involvement and things. Like we bring out the sources, we bring out the stuff, and people go, oh, Denlinger is just obsessed with the Catholic Church and whatever else. The Bible is obsessed with the Catholic Church. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, it should make your blood boil when you think back to how Christians had to suffer so we could have this book. We have to fight, brethren. We are at war with Roman Catholicism. There is no middle ground. There is no, well, let's compromise. Yes, the Bible word is Godhead, but let's say Trinity. There is no such thing. We bring out the thing on Stephen Anderson that he's working with a Roman Catholic church in South Africa, the Universal One Church. And people go, oh, you know, uh, uh, uh. he's a Catholic. He's working with Catholics. He teaches replacement theology. He teaches the whole post-trib thing. You go into the, into the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, it's, it's insane. But that's okay. That's okay. Don't get so upset, Brian. Don't get so upset. I'll get upset. Because I think back to Christians that were martyred. 
And I read in my King James Bible that in Revelation chapter 19, we are throwing a party when we see the destruction of Mystery Babylon, which is the Roman Catholic Church. God remembers her iniquities. The blood that was shed by the Catholic Church down through the centuries is not forgotten by God. And we shouldn't forget it either as Christians. And we should always be vigilant and always be looking and saying, Hey, wait a second here. You people are coming out, you preachers, you false preachers, you're coming out and you're saying terms from here that don't appear in this book. I'll tell you, it lights my fire, my boy. It ticks me off. When I think about, oh, my word, that, that movie yesterday, it, it, it lit something in me, I'll tell you what. Just seeing that, that thing, it just it brings it back again to my memory. The Christians that suffered and died and were tortured by the Roman Catholic Church. And today, I'm sure it's still going on places and things around. You know, I, I know that the Ustashi back in World War II and things that, you know, over there in Yugoslavia, they were killing Orthodox Christians and things and, and torturing them and murdering them and everything else. Vatican Holocaust, again, you know, right here, you know, right there. but I should just allow these Catholic infiltrators to come in. And Robert Breaker and Ed Fenninger both. Fenninger, you know, actually says that he got saved as a very young child when he heard the gospel in the Catholic Church. I mean, the guy's a total stinking fraud. And both of them tell you that you can go to hell by just taking the words of Romans chapter 10 literally. If you take the words of Romans chapter 10 literally, verses 9 and 10, I'll read it. All right? I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane that we have allowed these devils to get into our midst. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And they say, it's not a prayer. It's not a prayer. You can't call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Verse 13 says, Oh, it's not called, it's believe. It's, it, it, you know, it, it's, it. These lying devils teach you that if you take a literal interpretation of Romans 10, 9 through 13, it'll send you to hell. You have to change the text. And then they come in and you show that they're adding to the scriptures. They say God in three persons, no scripture. Trinity, no scripture. God the Father, that's Bible. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. No scripture. Divine essence. All this other stuff. No scripture given. I show it in the catechism. They say, oh, you're conspiratorial. Yeah, you know why? Because I caught them. I caught them. That's why they're saying it. As long as God gives me breath, I will never, ever back down on the Roman Catholic Church. And the Pope, he comes out recently, oh, there is no hell. You know, there's no, that's, that's not true and everything else. Yeah. You know what they're doing? It's called good cop, bad cop. They're setting up the world to receive the Antichrist. Absolutely. The Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to say, you've made a mockery of my church. You know, and, and a, a, away with you. And the Pope is going to be disgracefully walk out and things. Jesuit that he is. And he is a Jesuit. I know for some of you idiots out there, I'm being conspiratorial because I actually name a fact, you know. Lord help you. Okay? God have mercy on you wicked people. All right? Enemies of this ministry. <laughs> whatever. But the Antichrist is going to show up and he's going to restore Christendom and whatever else. And a little while later, the false prophet, you know, the second member of the Most Holy Trinity will show up. And after that, you'll have the old... Uh, winged little devil coming down from heaven when he gets kicked out in Revelation chapter 12, I think it is, you know. And by the way, let me just say this too about Robert Breaker. The guy lied about the Revelation 12 sign, got it from a Roman Catholic, Third Eagle Productions or whatever. Again, I proved that. Oh, I got this prophecy thing from a papist and I'm going to bring it out and it, and it fails, it flops. There was no Revelation 12 sign. And he comes out and he says, it, it didn't fail. It didn't fail. This didn't fail. 
Robert Breaker, you are one of the most prideful, sick little devils I've ever seen. You know, disgusting. And, you know, and, and uh, brother uh, Jacob Thomas, JT D O E S channel, Jacob Do JT Does, I guess, or Does, or whatever. Um, he did a whole video showing uh, Robert Breaker coming out and lying and using these extra biblical books, you know, the book of Jasher, the book of Enoch, and things. And he actually lies at one point and he says, uh, the Bible says, you know, it's written in the book of Enoch, or whatever, you know. There's no such thing in like, as, as that. The book of Jude doesn't say anything about the book of Enoch. Enoch prophesied of these. It doesn't say anything about the book of Enoch. But you see, these guys do it in such a slick way. And they, Robert Breaker does this little duping delight thing, this little, because he's just lying to people. He's a fake. He's a fraud. And he'll, <laughs> little laughter. Because he's lying to people. He's conning people. Just like Ed Fenninger does. Breaker's monetized. I don't think Fenninger's monetized. I don't think he could make much money at it anyways. But the whole point is, they're frauds. Both of them are. And Greg Miller, another fraud. I tr I've, I've been back and forth on the thing of Greg Miller. I'm going to show you a video coming up where he flat out vehemently denies the biblical Godhead. That Jesus Christ is the Father. And then you get these little trolls that come along too. Little buddies of Breaker and little buddies of Fenninger. And they go, they go, Denlinger doesn't believe that Jesus is the Son. <laughs> you know? And they don't care about truth. They don't care about facts. I've never said that. I say, Jesus is not God the Son. But, you know, what's lying to a lost person? Same thing as eating. Same thing as breathing. Doesn't mean anything. They will lie and lie and lie and lie. But if you are a Bible-believing Christian, you need to stand by what the Bible says, not what a bunch of deluded pagan Catholics teach. So, that's going to be it for this video. I have a couple other things I need to say about some other stuff too. Um, yeah, I will say this yet, I guess. I'm, I could do another video on this, but let me just read you part of the Second Vatican Council thing here. Um, again, what's, the, what's the, another importance of this Trinity thing? All right. Um, I'm thinking, should I do this in another video? I'm not sure. But uh, that, I'll, just, I'll just say it here. Okay. Uh, another importance of this Trinity thing is, when is this term here evoked, mostly? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, you know. And the, the Catholics will do it, the Protestants will do it, whatever else. Is there a significance there? Page 20 of the Second Vatican Council says here, number 15, The Church has many reasons for knowing that it is joined to the baptized who are honored by the name of Christian, but do not profess the faith in its entirety to have not or have not preserved unity of communion under the successor of Peter. What is it that joins the Catholic Church with all the uh, other sects out there? Well, according to this, it's baptism. We did a, a video a while back, you can do a search for it, about the thing of the RCIA um, documents and things proving that the Catholic Church recognizes certain denominations as having valid baptism. And the Baptist Church is one of them. You know why? Because they invoke the name of, the, of their trinity. And, I, you know, sure, the Bible says the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Sure, absolutely. You know, and some people say, well, then the, the, the name of them is Jesus, you know, and whatever. And then you get into the Jesus Pentecostal oneness thing, which says that there is no distinction and whatever. You get into trouble with that, too. But, you know, I'm not going to go that far, in other words. But the whole point is uh, the Catholic Church will be willing to join with different heretical sects if they believe in this. Why? Because it leads to what the end game of the Catholic Church is. Their man of sin, 666. You see? It's an interesting thing. Uh, oh, okay, I'm going to say one other, one other thing here. Go to the book of John. I thought of something else that's interesting. Why are the Catholics so vehement that God cannot be the soul in heaven. He has to have his own body, soul, and spirit. Why? I have a theory. Just a theory. 
John chapter 6. This is one of the big famous Catholic things that they go over. Um, <clears throat> we'll start in um, verse 53. Okay, this is the big, their big proof text for the, the Eucharist and transubstantiation and all that stuff, the Mass, in other words. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. All right. Obviously, Jesus is speaking symbolically there. Nobody came up and bit him. Nobody drank his blood. You know, at the Last Supper, he didn't, you know, hand his arm out and say, okay, take a bite, everybody. You know, no, he's speaking symbolically. How do we know that? Continue reading. Verse 57. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. You're supposed to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and that's the way I live by my Father. Then it has to be spiritual. Unless God the Father has a body. See, to a Catholic, they take that literal. You have to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus to maintain your salvation. Well, how does that work, though, when you have Jesus saying, you're supposed to do that with me, and that's how I do it with my Father? You see, if Jesus' Father is just a soul, souls don't have a body of flesh and blood. So you have to make this weird, warped trinity thing over here where God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit. So people down here on the earth are eating Jesus' body and you know his flesh and blood, and Jesus is up in heaven eating God's flesh and blood, apparently. You see? That's why their system has to be this way. You can't believe in the biblical Godhead because God would be a soul. You see that? You see how that thing works? I just thought that was interesting. So, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to talk here in the next one about the thing of, I've had some different people talk to me about, you know, the thing of Ruckman, and he uses some of the terms of essence and God the Son, God the Spirit, God the Father, you know, some of the stuff like that. Why does he use that? Well, I'm going to tell you why here in the next video. So, that is going to be it for this one. Um, let's stay vigilant, brethren. Uh, when you hear Roman Catholic things coming in, uh, we need to fight that stuff and get that stuff out. We need to show the lost world out there, specifically the Roman Catholics, that we are different than they are. We don't believe in winged angels like they do. We don't have statues. We don't put up idols of Trinity, you know, and all this other stuff. We don't do that. We don't have church buildings. We're different than they are. That's what we need to do.